Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out an awesome new 3D sculpting application that I've been a big fan of for a number of years now. Yeah, I know that sentence didn't make a lot of sense, but it's going to in just a second. And this actually comes at a good time. I didn't cover this in a news story, but basically uh, about two weeks ago, Maxon, uh, the creators of Cinema 4D and the owners of ZBrush, well, they killed off the free versions of ZBrush and the cheap version, ZBrush Core and ZBrush Core Mini. So if you're looking for a 3D sculpting application, as of two weeks ago, your options got a lot worse. Good news is they just got a lot better. And this is Nomad Sculpt. Now, when I said brand new, uh, but a big fan for a number of years. I'm a huge fan of the mobile version of Nomad Sculpt. So this is an excellent uh, sculpting and painting application for mobile devices. If you have uh, a high powered Android or iOS device, this is a wonderful way to do 3D sculpting. Now the platforms aren't amazing for actually working with a file system. So that's why working on a computer is probably better, but sculpting on the go using a tablet or a pen, it's wonderful. It's a great experience in this application, Nomad Sculpt, it's just, it's a great tool to work with. I've been a huge fan of it for a long time. Although truth of the matter is just because of workflow, I don't use mobile tools very often on a day-to-day -day basis. Just getting your files across, sharing it with your game engine, that kind of stuff. It's just a couple of extra steps and makes things a little bit annoying. So wouldn't it be wonderful if this nice, very affordable 3D sculpting application was available on desktop platforms? Hey, spoiler alert. So right now it is available for Android on the Google Play Store and it is available on the App Store in ID of the price over here, it's 20 bucks. So this is a very affordable application. Now I don't know how the pricing is going to work when it comes to the desktop version of this, uh, but I'm imagining it's gonna be somewhat comparable. It might even be possible you get the desktop license with your mobile, that'd be a really class move. But right now you can actually go ahead and check it out like this. So you'll see here, they actually have um, a beta version of it available like uh, here for Mac and Windows now. So you wanna see these natively, you can do so. Now the thing is, uh, you can actually also run it this way which is really cool. So you can actually run it in a browser like so. So unfortunately it does take the zoom that I did in the other window. So let's zoom that back out. Here we are in Nomad Sculpt. So this is actually very similar to the mobile version. I don't know if it actually has 100% of the functionality. I know the desktop versions don't yet. But as you see here, I'm painting in virtual clay. So we're in clay mode over here, uh, drag it around, you know, sculpting like normal. You've got control over symmetry here, so we're, we're mirroring it across this axis right now. So you got virtual cursors going on right there. I can hold down the Alt key, and we can do a negative version of our brush like so, and we can just bring it down like that. And we've got uh, tools over here, like for example, I could move or drag. So if I wanted to pull this out like it was a chin, I could just drag it down like so. Again, Alt, I can go in the opposite direction and push that in to do an indentation, like so. Um, actually, I guess you don't have to hold down Alt for that because you just go in the opposite direction when you're moving something. We get an idea of all the various different tools here. We got other tools here, for example, for flattening, like so. So I can just increase the radius of our brush and we could just do a flat surface right there. So you want to give this guy a top of his head as being completely flat. Speaking of which, since we're working on a head, I could have actually started uh, with like, um, you know, let's do a stylized here. There are some base meshes to work from, like so. Uh, you'll see here, this is a trial marked version, so you can't export. Although I do for some reason think that you can actually export with the beta versions for the mobile version, so something to be aware of. Uh, but you get an idea of what you can export out over to here. Uh, a variety of tools are available down the side. If you've worked with any sculpting application, you've got an idea of what this one is all about. Now, the cool thing here is you've also got a number of different tools here for topology. So we got voxelization and subdivision. So if I want to just subdivide this mesh, I could do so. So we've got a much uh, higher resolution version of it, but we also have dynamic topology, which I could have just turned this on and had it do that on the fly for me, where it's going to create more polygons as I need them. Uh, so you can see here, there is our new dense mesh. So let's undo there you can see with the subdivisions. We could have also done it again. I could have turned on dynamic topology and we can increase the detail to work with right there. And then it'll just do it for us. For this demo though, I'm just gonna go back in and I'll just do a multi-res. So you get an idea of the performance of things as well. Again, keep in mind, I'm running this entirely in my browser at this point in time. So this is built up of multiple pieces. You'll see here, so the eyes are separate like so. Uh, you've also got uh, some um, creation tools here. So I could add new and I could create basic shapes like, um, you know, another box. If I wanted to create a box in the world, uh, then I come over to the gizmo control. I could drag that up over there. Uh, you can actually, with objects selected, you'll notice going back over here, you do have the option of booleaning things to add them together or taking them apart. Uh, how do I delete? All right, there we go. So we'll get rid of that. Head on back over to our model. Which, here, so I killed one of his eyes. So you can see, 
a crease tool going on over there. You get an idea of the performance. It is, again, still very good. So if I need to add some scars to this poor guy, I could do so over here. As you can see, you can have multiple objects in your scene, like this poor eye that I took away from this guy. Let's crease in his ear like so. Say I don't like some of that, I could come back and go back over to smooth that out. And we can get rid of some of the ridges we worked on over here. Sculpting is just kind of a wonderful way to work with things. You can work with things, again, big sweeping changes like so. Use Booleans to create more complex objects if you wish. And then we get down into here, we also have painting tools available here, a variety of those different options available as well. So you got control over how your brush is working, you got control over how it looks and the various different materials that are available. So we could go here, pick up a skin material and we could paint accordingly. So you do have full painting materials here as well. And then you'll see that you do have the export abilities out. So you can export out to GLTF, OBJ, FBX, PLY, and STL. Uh, you also have rendering tools in here as well. You can go in here, I can add a light to the scene. So I can add new light in, see how that looks. Uh, like so move that around in the scene so you can see how it's going to influence this as you can see as I move the lighting around and we do have the ability to actually render our results out here add a camera and render out your actual work um, there's just a ton of functionality here it's a very impressive uh, application in that regard uh, and it is actually pretty intuitive to go ahead and work with it now as you saw earlier on we had that ability we did a multi rush oh I have multiple objects selected I don't want multiple objects selected I want a single object selected all right so single just you, all right, just you. Again, we got the ability over here. We did multi-resolution where we uh, we subdivided this down, or I could actually come back here. I could voxelize it and remesh this. So I could say, okay, I want much lower resolution and remesh this and it will kill our old multi-resolution. But there you see a low poly version of it is available as well. So regardless of which polygon level you're working with, that functionality is here. And again, you got a number of different tools here. You can see them uh, all available over here. So we could do like a, like a lathing, around the axis so I could just create a shape like this and it will create a 3D lathing option around there and like so and again you do have full boolean tools so I could create another thing and subtract it from it and then we start sculpting on top of that you've got other options up here so there's your symmetry control these are all settings based off of the thing that I have selected so you see all of the controls for handling everything that we just created are available here as well so if I switch over to clay you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get so here we're in clay mode and then various different options available here. So you got layer support here as well. Uh, the, this number of uh, settings available for what you are gone and a number of controls over your shortcuts and your usability and your speed. And one of the things that you're gonna find is when you go back over to the world of ZBrush, it is a wonderful and powerful tool with the worst, most dog shit uh, user interface that you've ever seen in your life. This is, again, it can be a little confusing at times, but it is so, so far beyond uh, what uh, ZBrush is from a user interface a usability perspective. I think that's one of those nice things about this coming from the tablet world. And again, you can see there's even a minimal version of it. So if you want to strip down the user interface, you can have it basically be this. Uh, and then, you know, just the tools you need as you need them. Uh, so you can have a very minimalistic workflow, which is quite nice. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is Nomad Sculpt, currently available uh, in beta format. So again, if you head on over to their website, so let me just bring this down here, nomadsculpt.com forward slash beta, you will find it's available for download for Windows and Mac. As we saw in action, you can also, again, use it here by going to let me just drag that out nomadsculpt.com forward slash demo and you can check out this version over here and again runs completely in your browser super simple for you to go ahead and check this out so no downloads even required just head on in your browser go to nomadsculpt.com forward slash demo and this is a, just a wonderful experience I, again i used it mostly on mobile because that's the only place it existed for the longest time and it was lovely and it always there have been a lot of people crawling out calling out not crawling out calling out for eons for them to make a desktop version of it and that is exactly what they are doing so i don't know what this is going to cost in the end but the cool thing is you can go ahead and check it out completely free uh right now at uh either slash demo or slash beta so let me know what you think have you used nomad sculpt on a mobile platform and what did you think of it and what do you use for sculpting right now are you using zbrush are you using blender or using 3d coat or are you using something else let me know comments down below and i'll talk to you all later goodbye